What do you mean about your delinquency? Well, there were the Tinsley brothers, and they were more in jail than they were out. They were always arrested for stealing and for drinking. And we lived on Elizabeth, and the saloon was on the corner. And the people used to rush back and forth with little tin cans and buy 10 cents worth of beer. And then they had a ladies' entrance on one side. And, uh, and that was the constant flow back and forth. But well, we had no phone. And if I had to phone the doctor or something of that kind, the Lambs, family by the name of Lambs, who were a bit upstartish, but started getting airs on themselves. And Edith Lamb was a young girl, and they used to go to the races. And I'd sit outside of our house and look at them. They'd have gorgeous. But were they Jewish? Huh? The Lambs were they no, Jewish? No, no, no. Yeah. But they owned the saloon. I see. And became rich as a result of that. And they had sons and the father and the mother. And every, as soon as the Woodbine racetrack opened up, they would get all for Putsch, you know, and I'd sit and it was all so new to me. And uh, these Chinsley brothers, when they got out of jail, used to always go down there and they had a great deal of respect for, for us and for me. And I was a, oh, about 13, 14 years of age. And so I had always wanted, I loved music and wanted a piano. Oh, I'd give anything in the world to get a piano. So we got a piano. And I would sit and sing, play for myself, and sing and cry, weep. My dress would be wet. Why? Sentimental. Oh, <laughs> what do you know? Uh, and then uh, there was one on uh, mother and that was enough for me so one day <coughs> and the boys would pass us by you know we'd say hi bill and my father would say hello because i was how meant you know, it's over so one day i'm sitting playing to myself and having a good time the door was always open, and in walked Will Tinsley. I think I told you the story, and he's cool, just bulging. And it was just, uh, I don't know whether it was at the time of my birthday or what, I can't definitely say. And he came in and he said, Miss Lewis, I brought you a present. And I said, oh, Will, you shouldn't do that. You know, we, we'd like you to come around. And we held back a little bit, but you know, the mm -hmm. feeling, the Jewish feeling. <coughs> he said, I have it here. And I said, what have you got there? And he opens up a coat and he had a chicken. <laughs> and I looked straight at him, where I got the common sense, I don't know. And I said, we're together, Bill. And he said, I took it from the yard on Edward Street. <laughs> so I said, Bill, thank you very, very much. But I'll tell you what, I don't want you to do that. I'm grateful that you thought about me. Now you take that chicken and go back and throw it over the fence. And he looked at me, you know, very pitifully sort of, and he said, you're sure you won't take it? And I said, I'm positive. But he took it back <laughs> and threw it over the fence. <laughs> then. They, we had the Daughters of Zion, used to meet across the road from Eaton's, up on the third floor. And you know, downstairs a people's uh, jeweler. Oh yes, that would be on Queen Street, would it, was it? Well, or that's Young yeah, Street. Yeah. And that door belonged to a cousin of mine, mm -hmm. Sam Grossman, who moved to Chicago, and people's jeweler bought it from. And so we would meet. We did, girls didn't live very far from it. We walked down to a meeting and then we'd come back. Now, at that time, Ward 4 was just being cleaned out of the worst burglaries, the worst crimes that you could possibly imagine, and I don't think anybody remembers that. And I did hear them say that, the, I, in fact, when we first came there, uh, we saw two policemen walking the beat together 
and they start dropping off the two policemen and having only one. So we girls weren't afraid to come home, but these Trinity brothers were afraid that somebody would talk to Miss Lewis. So they stand on the corner. They knew what time the few of us came home together because Bertha Levine, or Dr. Levine's mother, lived across the road and another girl lived, uh, Lansford lived the next day. We all came home together, but they were waiting for me. And we would start up the street and they walked behind us. And God help the man that ever <laughs> even looked our way. Well then, another thing that I remember, there are many things I I could remember, but this was very pronounced in, in my memory. Uh, there was a man by the name of Wallace. Wallace was an ordinary policeman, but a very high culture. He got to understand that our family were cultured people and became very much attracted to us, and he used to walk the beat. The inspector was called Anderson, and Mr. Anderson drove a bicycle and he would be looking to see where the policemen are. Well, we had that house, there were row of houses, and I won't tell you about one of my neighbors. A row of houses, all pretty much alike, and there was a little bit of a boardwalk, you know, from the sidewalk up, which I used to scrub right out from the kitchen, through the hall, down the steps, and right out to the street with lie, and then stand and look at it, because it was yellow beautiful. And when I hung new curtains for Pesach, I walked across the road to look at them. You know that pride? I do it still. Oh, <laughs> I those things them. made me. I loved what I did. I was tired. I was a, an anemic child. Remember that. My mother said, get in general hospital and end up getting pills. And that is another story. Anyhow, on a Friday night, when we would have our dinner, have our, after our supper, and we had a weird little bit of a hallway, and then two steps down. So Wallace would come along, and my brother and I had very lovely voices. We'd love to sing. Mother was a good singer, too. And Pa was a good listener. So Wallace would get into the little, uh, sort of a little hallway, mm -hmm. so that Anderson wouldn't see him, and Abe and I would start, I'd sing soprano, he'd sing alto, and we'd sing sweet alto, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Anderson would ride up the street and go past, and he'd say, keep going. And along would come the intensely boys, and we'd see them kind of linger. And then suddenly one of them would come over to me and said, um, do you mind if we join in singing with you? And my father said, yeah, and I was like, oh, no, come on. And we put a chair down and two of the boys and I would make it four. Maybe the other one was in jail, I can't tell it. And we would sing, oh, it was the sweetest thing in the world. And the boys would pick themselves up and say, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's lovely. I think that it did them more good than you can imagine. And first of all, our house, the door was open. If a poor person walked up the street, they came into our house. We weren't afraid of them. Mother sat them down, fed them, and away they'd go. I don't know whether we had very much money, but we gave them 10 or 15 cents. But everybody came into our house, let alone a uh, hid. But go in it, no fear. And this Wallace later, became the head of the detective 